right. How you doing? I'm great, man. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever done a podcast? I have not. <laughs> I'm, uh, it's kind of cool. That's cool, man. I'm available every Wednesday. That's cool, man. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> like, uh, just shower, down downstairs, I was just talking to somebody about pri the private lessons, you know, one, one of my private lessons, just to kind of share with them, like, just because people think, well, for him, he was like, uh, I don't like to do private lessons because... I don't know. It's like it's not fun, and I was like, "Well, you just you find the people that you like to do private lessons with, you know." And so that's why I introduced you to him because you know I, I really enjoyed doing private lessons with you, and you I know. had more fun doing yeah. private than I did with class. <laughs> I also never got my ass kicked so many times, but it was okay. You know, like uh, you know, you, and I was introduced to you as a you know your major pro debut at forty nine. I did at forty nine. You know, you had two fight, two professional fights. We wanted more, right? But it was crazy the. I mean, like you were supposed to fight. Like it was the fourth try. Fourth try, correct. First time you 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 tore your bicep. A week before. A week before. <laughs> so we organized all these events. Like one of them was like well, it was a king of the cage where Ronda Rousey made her debut. Correct. At yeah. your country club. At my country club. You oh my God. You and I were putting on that show with uh, Terry Trevelcock with King of the King Cage. of the Cage. Yeah. Then a week before, tore my bicep <clears throat> sparring, and then. Um, what was the next one? The next one, uh, oh, I had my hernia operation <laughs> eight months after I healed my bicep. And then I tore, then uh, Keenan broke my orbital on ground and pound day. You didn't, you didn't know, right? You didn't know no, that No, I didn't broken? know. I actually went to lunch and someone said, what's wrong with your eye? Uh. I said, what do you mean? I looked in the mirror, my eye was like out to here. So it was kind of fun. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. And then the last one, you made it all the way to fight day. And then what happened? I made weight, but the doctor said there was something on my medicals that didn't make sense. And, you know, we yelled and screamed and then we drove all the way home all pissed off. And I think I went home and had a chocolate cake or something after that. And then two hours later, Terry calls me up and says, fight's on. You'll be there tomorrow. So we drove back down and uh, they said, no, you can't fight. <laughs> we still don't know the reasons. It was crazy. It was crazy. So that was kind of so boring. the fight was back on, and then they they wouldn't allow me to fight. Twenty minutes before I was walking on, remember you we were wrapping me in the back. That's right. I remember I was driving back and forth. Yeah, and the doctor said that no, day. you can't. And I was fight. it was like an emotional even for me for me because you know it's like it takes a lot of work because I was always worried about you getting like hurt or whatever you know sure. like after all the torn biceps and yeah. broken orbitals you know <laughs> I was you know I was wanting to you know get your get your the make the dream come come true right like uh, we were trying make it happen you know we were trying. I guess it wasn't meant to be at the time. That time, yeah, that was crazy. It was. It was not fun. What What made you? And then you know we finally had made it happen. But what made you? We had our first MMA event here in Burbank, I think, right? Or was it Woodland Hills? Um, that was Woodland uh, Woodland Hills, I think. Your debut. Yeah, my debut was Woodland Hills. And then a second fight here in Burbank. No, my second one was at the Country Club again. With, oh, that's with, right. You came out. You came the, out with your suit. Yeah, your with, cut with, off <laughs> sleeves. Strictly business. <laughs> that's right. Robert Strictly Business Gleckman. There you go. There you go. Oh my God, that that was worth it. That, that was, was worth, worth it. it. That, that was worth it. Second fight was fun. Against Alex Rickards. That all was your fun. all your friends. Yeah, there was hundreds and hundreds of family. People they were all getting all create like emotional, like you know, getting worried about you know, because <laughs> you never know, right? A fight's you a fight. You never know. A fight's a fight. Your famous words. A fight's a fight. What made you, you know, until that the first fight that you finally made it through, you know. Uh, what, what what made you? Because the the guy, the first guy you fought, he was like half your age, right? Yeah, I was twenty five or something. Yeah. So what made you not give up? Because it was like a three year span at least that uh, we were there, training. There was, I think, three and a half. Yeah. Three and a half. Yeah. There you go. I was committed to the project. I became very passionate about it. Uh, obviously, after meeting you, I mean, we were, you know, this was a team thing. Um, you kept me pumped up, you know, and you know Jared and Darren yeah. and Keenan and. Rob and all those guys, I mean, they were uh, extremely helpful in the, the process and getting there, and Daniel. Mm. So yeah, you guys kept me fired up, but there was no way. I was going down. <laughs> I was fighting no matter what. Oh my God. That was brutal. Worth every, worth every minute of it. Did you ever feel like, ah, this isn't meant to be? No. No, I was committed. I was committed to it. Couldn't understand it, but I didn't really care. Sooner why do you, why did you think of like, what, what it mean, what it, why it meant so much to you? Um, you know, I think I've always believed when you start something, you got to finish it. And I became extremely passionate about fighting mm -hmm. and the camaraderie that you and I shared in our yeah. friendship. And uh, I was determined, man. There was no way anything was getting in the way. So, f you know, because a lot of people like you were, you were an you know, investment banker, like, uh, you know, you were, you know, to 
I mean, what, what, what's, what's your background? What, what, uh, investment, plan? investment banking. Business. Investment yeah. banking, okay. Uh, 30 something years. Okay. And so a lot of people talk about that, you know, but you actually followed through and did it. I did. And you could have had a million excuses why not to follow through, like your torn bicep, your broken orbital, but you followed through. You had the, I the did. balls to follow through. <laughs> <laughs> it was a crazy time, man. I man. loved every minute of it. Yeah. Every minute of it. It was some of the best times of my life, without question, without question. I miss it. I want to, I actually want to fight again. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I really do. What was the, what were the good things that, that, that just made, improved your life, that process? Uh, meeting you, obviously, uh, the day at Adam Roseman's house. I mean, that, that day changed my life, unbeknownst to me at the time, mm. but going down all those years, and we've known each other now 11 years, 12 years. So yeah, that without question changed my life, obviously for the positive. Mm -hmm. So um, great experience, this whole run has been a great experience. Mm -hmm. All the people that I've met behind it as well. Mm -hmm. Loved every minute of it, and I miss it dearly. I would honestly love to fight again, so we have to talk about that. <laughs> How old do you know? 56. 56. <laughs> the Sylvester, that was the rock, last Rocky Balboa. How old was he in the movie? 95 or something. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, it gives you, like, a discipline, right? And it gives you, like, a, like, a, a, like a focus every day, right? Structure. Structure. Yeah. Without question, a lot of structure. Good times. Yeah, see so your conditionings and... Everything. Yeah. Especially your brain. Need to focus. Getting hit in the face hurts. Craziness. And then and then we did the well, yeah, we you competed in jujitsu and you you got, got won that no gi world championship and then and then uh and then some years passed and then you went to do it again <laughs> and I forgot about we until we talked this last week, you right. know. I totally forgot about it, but it was like nuts, right? I was at the I was at the Worlds coaching other guys, right? And then you registered, or somebody registered you for the wrong uh, weight category. Yeah, I think my fiance at the time registered me for the Worlds. I told her uh -huh. to register, and she registered me for 172, I think it is. Uh, and I was 184 that morning, and I couldn't find my. I wanted to see how many rolls I was going to do that day, and it said I couldn't find my name. And all of a sudden, you called me back and said that you're down at 172, mm -hmm. and I'm 11, 12 pounds overweight. And you say your exact words to me, don't be a pussy, cut the weight in the next three hours. And I said, you out of your mind? How am I going to cut 12 pounds in three, four hours? Well, we did. Got yeah, it. Yeah, you guys, you did. Holy shit. That was yeah. crazy. I cut 11, 12 pounds. I was, I got, you know, like, you, you know, I, that was crazy because, uh, yeah, I was, how, how crazy I, I was, I told you exactly what to do, right? <laughs> to me exactly what to do. I go, Rachel, I was checking every 30 minutes, an hour. <laughs> We go downstairs, fire up the jacuzzi outside, takes an hour to heat up. I sit in there for an hour, I'm about to die, obviously on an empty stomach. And then within an hour and a half, I no, left. But you, were, you, had, you had eaten, you know, and so like you had eaten. So you were like, you know, kind of not bloated, but you were kind of, you know, like puffed up from all the eating and stuff. Sure. So you weren't like, you were good. This was not a typical weight cut. Right. What did you prepare for? Right, right, right. So within a couple hours, I was down four or five, and then I kind of passed out. And so Rachel went across the street to get my neighbor <laughs> so they could keep dunking me in the jacuzzi. Really? I, I couldn't keep my eyes open. That's hilarious. Yeah. Nah. Well, I, I remember checking in like, oh, like, it was like, it just, what was it? Was it 12 pounds? Was it 12 pounds? It was 11, it was 11 pounds. I was 183 and I had to go down to 172. I thought I only had to lose a pound in the morning for the one. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was supposed to be, you know? Yeah, it's 11 pounds. In like four hours. But you made the weight. I mean, and then I told you to like spit and, yeah. right? And then I had the exact like, uh, you got under the weight, right? A little bit under? About a half a pound, a pound under the and weight. And then I had you, like, I knew exactly, right, how much water for you to be able to drink, three right? Three how ounces, crazy was that, three right? Ounces. You told me I was like, three it was ounces. like, boom, boom, like it was nothing. It was crazy. It was so crazy. It was like 110 degrees out there that day, too. You made the weight. Respect. I, I made the weight. You made the weight. I made the weight. I did make the weight. It was a I can't believe I, like, I didn't have that with the, when I introduced you, you know, but the, mm. the fact that you cut, you know, because you were in your, your 50s already. Yeah. And to make a big cut, weight cut like that is pretty crazy. It was, that was a brutal day. It was brutal. And what even more pissed me off though that I got the silver medal. I should I had that thing won. And I was just. You went for a guillotine at the end. I went for a guillotine. You had won yeah. the match. I know I had it won and I decided to go for the finish and you know, I pulled him on top of me and he got the two. He got two hit. points. Yeah, at the last like five my, seconds. My brain was just not fully there. This was, <laughs> this was a mess. And everybody's like, stay on top, stay on top. <laughs> stay on top. And I'm like, <laughs> let me just grab his neck for fun and for the finish. It was so ridiculous. I was dominating that whole match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, man. Whatever, whatever. whatever. It's, it's 
<laughs> it's good to laugh about it now. <laughs> I'm still pissed off about it. But we'll come back and we'll win. Uh, we'll win yeah, tomorrow. man, we'll that, win that's, that's a great one, man, to do. You yeah. should do that. Yeah, I want to get. You should do I that. I want to win the brown. I want to win black, obviously. So we got to put some work in. Yeah. I'm ready for that again. That's, that was fun, man. It was a fun adventure. I mean, that's that's my like the motivations, right? Like those kinds of uh, ex experiences, those adventures that you share with people, you know. <laughs> if I go my, the rest of my life without losing eleven pounds in one afternoon, I'm. That's good. crazy. I, that's I'm, something I'm, you like. I'm, you'll never forget. Oh no, I'll never forget. Nor will Rachel. Rachel, right? <laughs> Rachel was. <laughs> she was, she was the traumatized. One. She was completely traumatized. She thought I was dead. But that's uh, super inspirational, you know. To, you know, just your mindset, the mindset that you that you have yeah. to be able to follow through and just make it, you know. Yeah, but it's for sure teamwork. I was tall. I, oh, I checked with in with the whole you. time. Yeah, I checked in with you. I kept checking in with you like every three yeah. minutes. So how are you doing? How's he doing? What's his weight? And Darren was calling too. Oh yeah, <laughs> Darren was calling. Oh, yeah. Is he alive? <laughs> yeah, Darren, man. <laughs> it was really funny. Actually, it really wasn't funny that day. I did not enjoy that day. It's a, it's a, it's a good memory though. Oh my it's god, it's a great memory. Yeah, it's a great memory. It really yeah. is a great memory. Yeah, anyone that's who's something done, to be proud of, you know. If anyone's ever done weight cuts, they they understand. That's like you know, you're like it's not like you're it's like you're, you know, you're like over fifty, all that stuff like may, may plays a big difference, right? With like your ability to just your body to be able to withstand like the stress, you know. For sure, yeah, yeah. That's so why. So he makes you a tough motherfucker. I like the After things. After that, I, I was like, respect, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you should have got the gold, but. I'm so pissed. I'm still fucking pissed off. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> still pissed. And that was a tough guy, too. I talked to that guy. I forgot his name, but uh, I talked to him. Uh, he Facebooks me every once in a while. Yeah, you just got to go back get, to get yeah. that and get that and go back again. That's what's cool about jujitsu. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely going to get the worlds at the blue and, I mean, at uh, brown and black. I'm definitely uh -huh. going to win at those levels. All right. Yeah. Cool. Going again. You said it. Let's, let's do it. Guaranteed. On the Alberta Crane Show, I'm guaranteeing those wins. All right. Let's do it. You got it. Shake on that. <laughs> Boom. Um, guaranteed. Man, uh, you've been you've supported me in all the you know, all the, the those promotions that we did, right? The uh, the the National Fight Alliance. How, was that the yeah, in the King the Alberto, of the Cages? The yeah, you, made, you made me a promote. I was like, I'll put my name on that thing. You know, <laughs> I was gonna bring you some shirts. I had some old shirts in the garage. The Alberto Crane, all different colors. National <laughs> Fight Alliance. <laughs> like what? It was great. With uh, what was uh, Mojica? That was his name. The guy that ran the show. Mojica. Mojica? Huh? I've, I've, I forgot his first name. I know, right? Oh, sorry, sorry about that. But. So we didn't do the first Burbank show. We did the first show. You're right. The first show was Burbank. But you didn't make your debut. No, I didn't. Because that's that way you broke your orbital or something. Right. That's the night I brought. That was the time I broke my orbital. But we did the show there. Orlando fought. All those guys fought. Yeah. Daniel fought. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. I thought I was losing lose my mind, but that's right. That's we right. We did like four shows, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> that was the first. And they now they have like MMA events at the same place at the Marriott. Oh, they're still doing them? Yeah, well, they <clears throat> before COVID, they were. Oh, yeah. George, George is doing them. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. I see George occasionally at the yeah, fans, yeah, I saw him yesterday. So. Oh, good. How's he yeah. doing? Good? He's good. Yeah, he's good. And can't wait to, you know, like get, I like, you know, we, we love the fight game. Well, maybe he'll sneak me in one of these shows. What's that? <laughs> maybe he'll sneak me in one of no, these. Fight for sure. One more, for fight for one more time. Oh, for like one of those. Well, I'm like, maybe. You got to get the, you got to get past the commission, right? That's the, <laughs> that's the, that's your biggest fight right now. Probably. I will get there. You're busy though now. You're working. I'm working. You're working uh, <clears throat> that you, got, you have your company, Germinator? That's Rachel's company, Rachel. Oh, okay, Rachel okay, okay, went okay, out okay, and okay. bought uh, Germinator.com, which Boom. is a mobile disinfecting company, and she's doing much. She has me working it. Boom. She there you go. She has me getting out there and working. So the investment banking thing, I leave after 1 o'clock, and I go help her out. But she's got a bunch of employees. She's doing great. She's nice. It. Nice. Nice, man. She's doing Good. great. It's good to see you busy and doing stuff, you know? Exactly. Yeah, we got to all stay busy, especially this last year right, with COVID. It's been, it was crazy. It's been challenging for a lot of people. Yeah. It's been very challenging. Yeah. Hopefully we're on our way out of this and everybody's, yeah. uh, you know, getting back to normal or the new normal anyway. Right. So we can put some smiles on our face again. Yeah, that's it. You know, you, you, you know like you, uh, yeah, smiles like, you know, one of the things that I, I, we, I would go every year is your Halloween parties at your house. Oh, God. So uh, we did a little one last year, but yeah, we had over. Oh, you did a little one last little year. Last year, we still snuck it in with COVID. Uh, we had fifty kids. Put up a little. All haunted. from the neighborhood. Yeah, did about. I put a, another haunted house up. I built one out. Oh no kids. way! Yeah, we kept it kind of simple, but we had to get approval for all the from the parents and everything, and we disinfected oh. everything through Germinator. Oh no way! 
yeah, had our non-alcohol sanitizers for the kids. Oh my God, you did it anyway. <laughs> we did it anyway. Yeah, man, you're such a warrior, man. Yeah. So, because. Uh, so ha tell me the story of how the Halloween, Halloween, because people would drive all from all over LA to to be a part of your thing. Well, I mean, if you want to go back to as a, a kid, uh, right? What Halloween was? <clears throat> there was a neighbor of mine, who back in the day, you're going back, you know, forty some odd years now, mm -hmm. that he uh, had a tiny little. What, what was his name? I don't remember what his name was, but he was in the neighborhood. Tiny little fogger, and I'm like, oh, this is cool. The only guy that did that and mm. had a couple monsters out in front of his house. Mm. And I'm like, this is cool. I want to do this when I get older. And so I started doing that. And then all of a sudden, I started developing skills to build haunts. And then I bought my own Halloween house, my Halloween haunted, uh, sorry, haunted house company with my friend Lee. Mm -hmm. and we built our own haunts. And then we really expanded the neighborhood mm -hmm. to where we had over 1,000 people. So we had 200 houses with tear trucks. Yeah. And um, we built something through the garage as well. We had, what, five live shows. and. Pizza. Live shows? Oh, yeah, yeah. Live shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Live shows, magicians, and go-go dancers, and sword swallowers, and, you know, freaky, just freaky people. Yeah, I mean, this is an experience. Like, and then, and then, yeah, so so going back, so you saw the fog machine, and then you're like, you just yeah, like, found love. Yeah, I'm like, this is really cool. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was cool, and you had some little monsters out in front, and a popcorn maker, and, you know, next thing I know, I said, I can do better than that. Over the last 40 years, I just ramped it up to... Crazy. Every year you just kept trying yeah. to pr improve. Yeah, it was craziness. We had over a thousand people in my house almost every year. It was insane. Well, you know, you saw. <laughs> you were yeah, there. You yeah, were it was there crazy. Year. It was crazy. Yeah, it was cool. It was really amazing. It was really fun. Because it was cool. all from the heart, you know? Yeah, I loved it. It was fun. It was really Like fun. it made you so happy you'd get into your, your costumes too. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm a full carning man. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> that, was really, that, was really, that was really great. It was fun. Kids yeah. enjoyed it. The adults enjoyed it too. Yeah. It was, it was a blast. Yeah, it was really nice. And then, of course, you started your Halloween, uh, uh, started the Halloween uh, business. The Haunted House Company. Haunted House Company. Company. Yes. <laughs> that was a great waste of a half a million dollars, but yeah, it was fine. You know, but yeah, it was like, it was, that was pretty crazy, man. My, my kids, I can, I can still remember them. They were so scared oh, from were, the outside that I would even go in. They were so good. Were that so my kids good. wouldn't, of course, not go in, but when I went in, like they were just like, no, don't go in, don't go in. They're crying, you know, my that. daughters, yeah. They were intense. Those were intense. Those were really fun. We tried to get in with the studios, unfortunately it just didn't work out, but uh, we had a good six, seven, eight year run with it and made a lot of people happy and smile yeah. and cry and pee their pants and so it was great. <laughs> it was worth it. It was, it was well worth it. Had a lot of fun, met a lot of nice people too. From yeah. It. So some businesses that don't work out, still, yeah. you still get something out of it. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, the, the haunted house. You went in, and then it was like you would watch like a person. I remember like there was a screen, and you would watch the person, you know, come down, and then like, and then they it jumps onto the screen and it sprays out, and you're like, oh my god! Oh, it looked like it was breaking through the, the screen. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. You know, you're just like, ah! and then you're like startled. Then you walk in, and then it it's so weird. crazy because it was just in a, an RV, pretty much, right? It was a 45 fifth fifth wheel, 45 foot fifth wheel trailer. Okay. And we had over 100 linear feet of walking space, so it was really, really impressive. Very compact and very, it took you 15, uh, eight, nine minutes to get through it. So it was very intense. <laughs> it was so fun. Yeah, yeah. I really yeah. love those. Yeah. My partner Lee did a very good job with those. Yeah. Very What's he up to these days? <clears throat> he still does some haunt stuff. He okay. still has, uh, I sold him everything. I gave him everything back or sold them back to him. And he uh, does some small stuff now, but he still is a haunter to the death. And he still keeps How, how did he get started? You know, I don't know. Because you guys are like, man, you guys are like, you just went over the top. Like, you love that stuff so much. Like, I, I, of course, I, I love Halloween and yeah. it's fun. But like, you got you, you know, looking at you, like you, you guys give the big, you, you would give the big candy bars yeah, at the, the Halloween. Bars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. You know, it was like so, like <laughs> so kind of you. You know, oh, and so and you just you brought so much joy to you to just you know to loved it. I love kids, man. I yeah, just, you know, you love life. You gotta got to give back in certain areas of your life you know find what you're good at and deliver the message you know that's all it is so i like to make people smile yeah i'm getting my ass kicked or passing out candy either one yeah that's nice man. good times yeah those are great and then uh and then you had your fourth of, you do your fourth of july yeah my fourth of july gig. parties and you like rent out or like rent out the the slides those those slipping slides like the big tall ones yeah we get the big ones the inflatable <laughs> ones the giant ones in the back like 40 footers 40 footers yeah but i also have the water slide in the backyard myself right 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 right, so, right. but the, the big inflatable ones are fun those are blast too and then uh, we do the fireworks on the basketball court which is blow up my yard <laughs> yeah so, so you do it over the top 
<laughs> so your fun. friends, the friends, and their friends, and it was great. make it a party. We do the, the you have the the volleyball with the with the <sighs> Gleckman rules in the pool. Yes, best rules ever. Play How are you gonna move out of that house, man? It's not gonna be a Gleckman pool anymore. <laughs> I know. Believe with it or not, volleyball games. Believe it or not, my friend may be buying my house. Mm, okay, yeah. then you can then you can still have it then. Yeah, so uh, it'll just be his rules now in the pool. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I think we have Rachel and I are gonna be moving to the beach. It looks like. So good for you guys. Rest and relaxation a little bit. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. But it's okay. Maybe I'll learn. Getting older. Got to tone it down a little, maybe. Probably not. Not if you're my friend. It 50. Work, no, no way, man. I'm the relaxed one. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> you're the one wrestling with Darren in oh. the in the UFC uh, hallway That's at the hotel. The, that, that was one of the <laughs> <laughs> craziest nights ever. Jared's debut. Remember for his UFC event? Yeah. Yeah. I was talking shit to Darren. Next time we start brawling in the hallway or in the lobby. The security guards are watching us fight. <laughs> you, got, you, you guys went to high school together, right? Yeah, went to high school, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. When we first met, like, what made you want to, uh, like, you know, I think we just had a cable. I was I just invite you to do a class, right? Yeah, he offered me a free class, uh, well, a free class, and I said, sure, I'm in for a free lesson. Why yeah. not? And within one minute, I'm like, wow, this stuff's wild. Mm. And I literally within one minute, and then I, I signed up for ten, you know, private lessons from you, mm. and eleven years later, we're doing a yeah. podcast. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It was just, it was that quick. Did you ever do martial arts when you were younger? I did a little karate or something when I was, you know, like a kid. 10 years old you know that only lasted probably a few months but that was it the chuck norris studio days pretty much chuck norris yeah yeah studios up and down the in, valley in right sherman oaks yeah in sherman oaks but for sure it's chuck norris yeah yeah every kid did it at least for a day did valley. you watch ufc i guess we met at a ufc right <laughs> well we had a, i had UFC. a meeting a meeting with adam okay and uh was supposed to be you know a business meeting and i got there and i saw you young guys watching mm -hmm. ufc fights and i had no idea who you guys were and then we did our little shtick our little meeting and then you came up to me toward the end of the night, introduced yourself, and said, you know, I own a jiu-jitsu studio, mm. and do you like the UFC? And I said, no, I don't really like this stuff. It's too violent, man. And really? I said, yeah. yeah. I, I don't like seeing people get kicked in the head. Now I love it. But, I mean, back in the day, I was just like, ah, that's not for Did me. Did you watch boxing? Yeah, boxing was fine. But, you know, guys getting hammer-fisted on the ground and, you know, flopping around. I, I didn't find it cool at the time. Now I love it. You know? mm. I don't even care if it's me. I kind of dig it. And so... Um, you, oh, here, I'll give you a free lesson if you're local. And I said, sure, I'll come in and see you this week. The rest is history. Man, you never man. stopped, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy, right? One, <laughs> one little invite. One little, but We random. spent a lot of time. We spent a lot of time training. We did. We went all over. You would, you would drive to, you know, wherever we were at, we're at yeah. the cages and all that. The main events down in, was it Burbank? In Glendale, Glendale, Glendale yeah. yeah. Those are cool dudes down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some tough guys down there. Yeah. That's funny. And you helped a lot of these guys start out their, their MMA careers, you know? Some with of them, yeah. the promotions, you know, that we did. Yeah, well, I mean, we both did that, and we all put the money in, yeah. and we all put the time in, and we created I it. sold tickets. I sold tickets for you, like the King <laughs> yes, of the Cage. Yes, you did, baby. I, the King of the Cage uh, at your country club, right? Yeah. They, they came back the tickets, and you're like, what? You know, I thought they were going to sell those tickets, right? <laughs> I do. I remember all that. It's crazy. What was this? You tell the story of uh, Terry Trebilcock giving back the tickets. Oh, God, what was that one? Um... It was the king of the cage. It was at your country club. Oh, sure. I remember the athletic commission said, they said, like, make sure you take care of this place because this is the nicest place that, you know, like we've ever been at for our fights because basically our locker rooms, you, you know, it was the top of the valley. So you were look, overlooking the whole, like the whole valley. Like yep. you had the valley, you had the whole view of the city, you know, the, val the San Fernando Valley. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, it was great. It was such a great Yeah, event. it was amazing. But you remember, here was the, what was crazy. We were doing the event on the top part of the parking lot. Right. And for some reason, there was some fire issue, fire code issue with that in the last minute. So we had to move the entire show underneath within hours. This was late afternoon. The shows were, what, at 7 or 8? So it was a mass... So they moved it mass to downstairs. Hysteria, mass hysteria to get this thing going and to get all the seats lined up because it was a different formation because of the pillars. And mm. Oh, it's totally chaotic. It's totally chaotic. But uh, Terry pulled it off. He pulled all that off. <laughs> yeah, so they moved it below, below. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, in, in a parking garage pretty much. Yeah, we were on it the top. Cool. It, it was, was cool. It was cool, and it probably worked out better because of the sun and stuff. The sun also, too, was a little warmer, but also the echoing from the crowd. Oh, it made it louder. a thousand people under there, so 1,200 people. So it was like echo. Street Fighter. Like, it was like uh, total was Street like... Fighters, underground <laughs> stuff. 
<laughs> I remember we were so stressed out about it, and we're like, no, this is kind of How are they? Did I, did I get stressed? No, I don't get stressed. We're aggravated. I think we're just aggravated because we're just trying to get this thing done. So I don't think we really get mad, but it was just kind of like, fuck, can we just anything go smoothly? Yeah, and we took the golf carts to go <laughs> from the from the from the clubhouse <laughs> to the to and it's all everything's all proper, right? So then we have these like you know crazy fighters <laughs> and a the, bunch of crazy fighters and golf carts just going all over the park. That's cool, man. It was That's fun. cool. Because it was far, you had to go all the way down. Yeah, it's a little bit of a you know good quarter mile probably, it's eighth of a mile to get all the way over there. And right? I yeah, and I sold tickets. I sold. I remember like you were like all stressed out. I was like, all right, don't worry. Like we'll I'll do my best because they give you back a ton of tickets back. Right. Yeah, King of the Cage. For you to even break money. break right. even, right? Right. Oh no, we lost money. I think you made some like whatever. I don't know. I don't remember. But you know, just so Doesn't whatever. Matter. Whatever. Yeah. It's worth it. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's all worth it. That was a that was a fun. That was Ronda's debut. Right. That was Ronda. That whole night, we all got our we all got our pro fight card with Ronda on the same day. Do you remember that? So it was um, not Jared already had his, but it was uh, I think Rob, mm. Keenan, mm. Daniel. Oh, they made your they, their their debuts. We did it here. We got remember we for, for the, um, the athletic commission. We came here to test for our license, our pro cards. Oh, okay. And we all did that here at Legacy. Oh, oh, that's right. That to watch you train and watch stuff. You try, watch you train. That was funny. Yeah, all that's of us. Why I forget about all those memories. Yeah. Yeah, they watched you train. They watched you hit pads. Right. And then they watched you grapple. Then you had to spar, and then you do all. And then I, okay, they're cool. <laughs> then you pass. Here's your license to go. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, all of us. And then you do your like medicals, like your blood work yeah, and all that all stuff. Different. Yeah. Yeah, that was. They had to like approve you, you had to, to prove make you sure you're you professionals. Your right, you were capable of fighting. Yeah. So you had to go through a test. So we all did that the same day. It was Rhonda, myself, that was uh, funny. Rob Gooch. Uh, Jared was here, obviously, supporting. Yeah. Um, Keenan. Keenan. Daniel. Daniel. All of us. Daniel's a beast. I think Orlando, yeah. too. Oh, Daniel's a beast. Yeah. yeah. Tough kid. Orlando, yeah. All of us, so everybody was here going through the tests, hitting the, hitting the pads, uh, you know, the heavy bag, and grappling, and sparring, and, mm. and we all passed. <laughs> Thank you, Alberto. That's funny. <laughs> Can't believe you didn't remember that one. That was so funny. Yeah, just like those, the the memories go by, right? Yeah. I prefer, you know, I didn't forget about your weight cut, but I didn't I think still, about it. I just when I when I think of you, I think of the all the the fights, like those two fights, but then the the three <laughs> fights, the three fights you were supposed to have before that. Right. Yeah. Well, we were trying to get you to fight uh, Ken Shamrock. Yeah, that, would, that was the dream. That, right would, there. that would have been the dream. Two old guys. Yeah, that'd be fun. You I'm, beating Ken Shamrock, the world's most dangerous man. Well, you know, I was. That was the dream. We were trying to search. That's what we were shooting for. I was. I'm. I, I'm still down. If he wants to go. <laughs> Ken, you're gonna have to. Come. I think that's what I saw. I, yeah. We talked about it, and I got you excited. Yeah, oh, what? I'm then I'll be the most dangerous man in the world. Exactly. <laughs> you can put me on a beer can. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Robert strictly, strictly business Gleckman. Yeah. I was so down. If Ken, if you want to go, I'm down. You got to cut a few pounds, though, man. Oh, I'll, I'll go God. up a few if he wants to come down. Oh, It'd be an God. honor to, to bang oh, with you. God. Yeah, he's a tough guy, man. That'd, that'd be a little bit. Big bite to chew right there, but I would be down. Hey, man. You catch know. a beating, you catch a beating, you know? <laughs> so funny, so funny. Just random conversations that lead into, but you do it, you do it, you know? You do it, you go for it. I was very serious that. about that, too, yeah. I would have I would have fought anybody. I was totally down. Whatever, I felt, you know, strong enough and capable enough, you know, thanks to you and to the team. And Rick, you know, Rick O'Kane. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Rick, Miss Rick, I haven't talked to him in a long time. Yeah. You know, he's a tough guy. Yeah. Oh, boy, tough guy. Learned a lot from him. Brian Avalar. Yeah, Brian. Brian. Good old Brian. Yeah, yeah we, had good, we had a good team. We had a good team. Yeah. Very good team. It's fun. A bunch of tough guys. It's fun. We went to, did you go to Oklahoma with us when Jared fought? No, no. I went to Nashville. Nashville. <clears throat> Nashville, yeah. That's where you fought Darren in the, uh, in the, in the, hall. In the hallway. <laughs> in the out front of the elevator. <laughs> so funny. Can I insult him on your line here? I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can kick his ass. He'll kick his ass. <laughs> I kept talking shit to him for years. Oh my god! You know, I wanted to fight him too. Right, yeah. right, right. But I know he's he's physically got some ailments over yeah. the years. From well, he's been training for his whole life. Yeah. So he's a little. You guys are funny, man. Oh my, he's funny. one of my dear friends, man. Yeah, be yeah. Honored to beat the shit out of him too. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, respect though, respect you did all you like you did it. You did you did all the stuff and you can still compete and you can still do it, but you really did it, you know. I Considering did. like you didn't have any kind of background and you know, like some of the that weight cut, the 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 tournaments and then winning. It's it's really cool. Yeah. Proud of you. I really enjoyed it all, man. Thank you. Yeah, it wasn't for you, man, I wouldn't be here, man. It's you were ninety nine percent of that, man. You you got me there. 
Man, tell me, like we talked, you know, like your your, your dad. You grew up in you grew up in in, in Sherman Oaks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, correct. And uh, tell me, tell me some of your your childhood stuff. I had a great childhood. Great parents. You know, they still divorce like everybody does. But I had a great family. Great, you know, cousins, sister, uh-huh. mom, dad, grandparents. Very structured life. Uh-huh. Very fortunate. Provided me, you know, education, culture, relatively intelligence. You know, not mm. not too bad. Mm. But yeah, great family. No complaints. And how did you get into like investment banking and um, those kind of, that kind of? I was of trading world? stocks when I was a young kid. Okay. And uh, I decided to do it professionally. H- how did you get into that? I went and got a job, took a test, got a job, and started out small small firms. Went to big firms and then branched out on my own in the late '90s, early 2000s. Mm. So gave up being a stock broker and started just doing financial raises for companies. And that's been it for so many years. It's what I know. And now I'm officially, I've been hired by my fiance to be a germinator. <laughs> it's, one, it, one, it's, a, it's all an adventure, right? All the, all the stuff it that is, you do. You know, it's all fun. And we just laugh at, all, at it all. Yeah, you do. Just keep going. It'll, let me tell you, life could be a lot worse. been very fortunate and blessed. Thank God. Thank God for that. Was your dad a stock broker? Uh, he was. He was a financial PR guy. Okay. Yeah. He had, he had passed away about 20 years ago. Okay. Yeah, he was a, he was a good dude. And you, 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 I remember you always telling me that he's, uh, he would say, China's the, China, China, that China's where it's going, you know? China's where it's going. He had, uh, my father, believe it or not, this is a great story. He was setting up, like in New York, you know, the Sabre hot dogs on the corner. He was setting up with the government hot dogs on the corner, I believe, through Hoffee and Coca Cola. And he was all set up. He had bought hundreds of carts, half, like five, four, five hundred carts. He was set up with the government in China wow. back in the late 90s, or actually mid 90s. Hmm. And um, he unfortunately had a stroke. Oh, just wiped it out. Yeah, yeah. He had some very influential contacts. It was uh, he called it 30 years ago. So China is it? China. And here we are, huh? Them. And here we are. (laughs) And it is it. America first, man. We're still there. Yeah, yeah. We're still there. It's the we'll win the the fight. We'll win the fight. The American dream, right? We stand for. Yeah, we'll win the fight. Yeah. What do you think about blockchain? You know, I don't know a lot about cryptos. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, I know enough about them. Um, I think it's one of the great, I think uh, the, the Bitcoin is one of the greatest things I've ever seen invented. Mm. The question is, does it take over the US dollar? That's all it boils down to. I think all the big money has been made down here with it. That's in my opinion. If you owned it at a you know, penny or a dollar or right. $10 or 5,000, you'd up, you know, God only knows how much. Uh, a couple of my dearest friends uh, made absolute fortunes. Were running some of the biggest mining companies, mm. so they walked away with you know a few bucks. I mean, big money. Mm. But now, you know, fifty thousand, sixty thousand to who knows? You know, I don't believe in all these other ones though. There's no value to any of these things. But it doesn't mean you can't make money. Yeah, you can make money in anything, man. I just you know, there's a guy named George Glider. Do you know who he is? No. He's like a futuristic guy. Like mm-hmm. uh, he he wrote like some good books, like the Reagan administration. Like really. Uh, um, he had, he had him, he had, he had, Reagan had read, uh, had all his uh, cabinet read it, you know, he has a book called life after Google and the end of big tech mm-hmm. and the merchants of blockchain technology. Very possible. And so everything's going to be, you know, encrypted with blockchain technology is the, is the, is the currency going to be blockchain? Like, you know, like, I don't know, or is this dollar, it just seems like. It's kind of an end of an era, especially after this COVID, and it seems like it was an excuse kind of to just, and we're just printing money, right? There's got to be. And we're printing a lot more money now, too. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't know. You know so the dollar, it reigned supreme for so long. You know, the whole world has to incorporate to it, not just America and China and India. Right. And, you know, and Europe. It, right. You know, it's a big feat, in my opinion. I don't actually understand how it would work. Yeah. Uh, but don't forget, the U.S. currency rules the world. Right, but just yeah, let's, let's see, let's see what happens, right? I don't yeah. know, I have no idea, right? I I'm don't have a, any clue on this one. Yeah, you know? I just got blessed. People are making money. Go for it, keep it going. But the the you know the Bitcoin, like you know the fact that PayPal and these big companies are square, they're adopting it, right? Some of them are, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's big. Well, when the hedge funds start taking it and the major corporations start using it, then, you know, take a look at it, but. I mean, I don't I'll, listen. I'm, I don't think I'm going to make any money in it. Okay. So yeah. I think I've missed a lot of those rides. Yeah. So. Yeah, we talk. Yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's, uh, it's fun. It's interesting too. As long as you're making money, man. All this all this crazy stuff like this last year, I think, 
it all comes down to the people for me, you know? That's all it is. You know, like just the connections and the memories and, you know, because stuff can go up and down. It can go left and right. And, like, those things change all the time, right? Well, you have reflection now. So you see what's important. You know, a lot of people lost their lives, their jobs, yeah. you know, their kids, their parents. You know, it's been a shitty time for a lot of people. You know, thank God for you and I that you know, we've hung in there and done okay. But a lot of people are less fortunate, so you start to reflect on, you know, the positive things you have in your life, or had and do have. So you got to keep looking forward, man. This is a really shitty time for a lot of people. It's yeah. Very unfortunate. So you just got to keep pushing, man. Yeah. Just keep pushing everywhere. Tell me a crazy Robert Gleckman story uh, without incriminating yourself too bad, <laughs> by a little bit of incrimination. Oh, uh, probably have to keep those down. <laughs> well, give me something specific that you think you know of. Um, I've calmed down in my life, Alberto. In the, fa- in the past, you know, when you were younger, you know, just uh, oh a business, like some kind of business thing, transaction, business s- story. Oh, well, um, my first business, my first business was a communication company. Okay. I probably shouldn't say it on your <laughs> 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 A communication company? <laughs> Do you remember like those horoscope lines? Uh, people oh, call like up, that. You know, they'd call it for One in $2, $2 per phone call for a horoscope line. Well, let's just say when I was 18 years old and 17 years old, they weren't horoscope lines. <laughs> They're like, like, like sex lines or what? The rumor has it. Oh, I see. <laughs> just say it. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, I know. I set up uh, you know, adult dirty talks when I was 17 and 18 years old and 19 years old. So it was my first business. Wow. Communication company, yeah. So That's crazy, huh? They, um, what, what ti- how times have changed. Just from I that kind of media, but stuff is still out there. I mean, there. The, the stuff back then was, you know, very R and PG. Uh, I and mean, now it's just over the top and disgusting, some of it. So so if you set them up, what, it, what, what you just set up the communication, you, did you find the people or you had people that found the people? People that found the people. <laughs> <laughs> people that found the people. Leave, leave, leave it there. I was, I was a kid, man. I didn't know what I was doing. So what made you want to do that? It wasn't that. I just found the guy that I met was making a lot of money doing this. Mm. And I'm like, oh, really? You know, like the horoscope things on television. And I went, okay, um, interesting. So what else can we do with it? And so I followed his tracks. So I kind of parroted what he did. Um, and we did okay. We mm. were selling it for a little bit of money and mm. you know, moved on to trading stocks and investment from there. So we did okay. That's I cool. was a kid. You know, I, actually, the guy that I sold it to turned it into a multi, multi, multi million dollar business internationally. Isn't that crazy? If I would have known what the hell I was doing, I probably would have done the same. Back. Yeah, you're always you're always chasing after what what like you, you know when you get focused on on doing stuff, like what motivates you about like making making a lot of money, for example. Well, freedom, you know, gave the the money that I make in life gave me the ability to you know train and fight and follow mm. a new passion that I never knew I had. So you grow, you learn. You able to do stuff I mean, that you want to do. do. And, you, know, you have the freedom to do things. It's not so much buying stuff as you get older and stuff like that. I have no interest in that stuff. It's up to me. Um, everything is about my Gotta freedom. talk into the microphone or Sorry. else people get mad if they listen to the audio. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's freedom. Yeah. It's freedom. That's all it boils down to, mm. which is obviously the biggest thing in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And that gives you options. Yeah. But, you know, everybody ran into tough times here too. So including me, mm. you know, we all lost, you know, got banged around a little bit. So you mm. make comebacks. Yeah. Yeah. Keep your head up. Lose the weight. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> You know, one of the things you told me about your dad, just when he got older, right? Like, uh, um, well, just you're able to take care of your dad too, help your dad, right? Help your family out. Yeah, he was sick. Unfortunately, he was um, incapacitated. So, thank God, I had the means to, mm-hmm. you know, provide him shelter and food and the proper health care and make it comfortable for him in his final days or his final few years, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if it ended that, it would have been you know, really shitty having to go through current insurance situations, which uh, we all know are not fun these days. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, those are pretty heavy times though too. Those are pretty heavy. You know, your sister. I just remember you were talking about martial arts. Your sister was, you know, your sister a martial artist. You a know? Badass. Yeah. 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 It was a multi-level black belt in Hapkido. Mm-hmm. All the kids, all the boys too. My nephews. And your nephews. Yeah. The Farbors. Yeah. And Ash. Yeah, they're oh, they're tough. They're so you you've been around the scene. That's I was I was yeah. I was thinking about that. <laughs> she did it as an adult. Right. She right. Right. As an right. Adult. When she had right. her kids. Yeah, and we try, remember we tried to get her to fight too. <laughs> we tried to get her one of our shows. She would. Did I? Did I say that? Yeah, you, you, no, you, you're I think I was trying. That. I was trying to instigate her. She's like, to... "No, I have kids." I'm like, "Come oh on." Oh my god. No, she won't do it. Oh, it's amazing that you did. You went for it, you know, because a lot of people talk, but you actually did it. You know, you, you haven't been training for you know 
it's not your, your like your life it is but it wasn't right oh no yeah right it is but it wasn't you know like so what are you thinking when you finally made the walk to the cage what goes through your what went through your mind i couldn't wait to get in that cage fast enough to kick that guy's ass i, I was so so tired of being hurt and banged up mm. and these things being canceled and I discontinued for a while. Mm. I was just fed up and delayed. I was just, let's just get this thing going already. I was ready to go. There was no nerves. There was no nothing. Mm. I was like, Jesus, all my work, let's go. Mm. Don't stub my toe on the way in. <laughs> <laughs> watch your step, watch your step. Watch your step. <laughs> I swear I was going to sleep at the ho- right in the, in the cage that night so nothing else happened. Yeah. It was just a kind of a, it was ridiculous, that whole little sequence of events for two years. <laughs> it's injuries. It's crazy, right? right. Like for years, it, was God, like, it's, it never ended. Never ended. So, but uh, yeah, I was just you finally got it. I was ready to go. But uh, man, that 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 fight at the country club—that was the where you went out with all your friends and your country club like friends and was family. Awesome. Like that was so cool, man. That was awesome. I, I, I took it into I like I looked around and well, I was we're like, walking, oh, guys, we're talk about like what what is what is money? Those kinds of things. What does that afford you? Like moments like this, you know? It can, yeah, it can. Um, you know, in anything, you gotta. People don't. You know, people who make money right. sometimes and lose money, they don't know how to make it again. Mm-hmm. For me, the most important thing on my I say is freedom and the ability to do things and like to protect your families, mm-hmm. and, you know, provide education for your kids. Mm-hmm. And this to me was like an educational experience as well. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a passion. It wasn't a vice. It was a passion. And so yeah, it got I, you healthy, got you eating oh good, got you moving. Unbelievable. And, you know, also friends. I mean, come on, the friends are priceless. All the guys that I've known. And yeah, yeah. half you guys are half my age. <laughs> I still talk to you guys all the time. Yeah. You still annoy the shit out of me. But um, <laughs> no, but that was the thing. But walking that, doing that, the country club, walking in that time, I was walking down to the cage. You know, Big John was there. So that mm-hmm. was kind of a, you know, a thrill for me too. Yeah. Big John was your, was your, your uh, ref, you know? Yeah. Come on, man. It was fucking awesome, you know? And, but all my friends got out of their seat and formed like this little uh, tunnel for me to walk through. Yeah. And yeah, all yeah, yeah. Hit me on the head. And yeah. I was really you cut dope. your uh, you cut your uh, suit off cut with my, the, my your sleeves off sleeve. the suit. Yeah, you know, strictly business. You had, a, you, you had a tie, right? A loose tie. I had a t- loose tie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Living go. it up, you know. Hey man, you got to do what you got to do. That's funny. Yeah. I remember the dream was to fight Ken Shamrock. I, that would the been most da- the the most dangerous man in the world because they had that show on him. Remember? Yeah. Oh yeah, he's the, and he was named the most dangerous man in the world. He's a tough dude, man. He's a big dude, dude. Hey, we're gonna, we're gonna, and then you gotta, you gotta challenge him because he had fought. Uh, no, Herschel Walker had fought. That's how yeah. that that started. Yeah, right? Herschel Walker would have been a kind of a. a no, he's too big. He was too big. Too big, guy, he's too yeah. big yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, geez, Kent's not a small man either. Was he two forty? But he can come down though. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, maybe a. Rough you would have done it anyway, though. Absolutely, it would have been. A I think you would have done both of them. Yeah, I would have. I'm down. It would have been a rough day for Rob, probably, but who cares? You know, get a shot or two in, and never know. You never know, right? As you say, it's a fight. Never know. <laughs> I'd be down, Ken. I'm available on weekends. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, come on, to get to him and have the opportunity to fight a Hall of Fame fighter like that would be amazing, right? It'd be a gift. What's your uh, What's your favorite part of you know the your martial arts journey? What's been your favorite your favorite part? Um, <clears throat> training with you, probably mm-hmm. some of our, you know, one on one, you know male bonding crap, you know, would just, you know, beat the shit out of each other. Kind of, well, you usually beat the shit out of me, but, <laughs> and then laughing. <laughs> it was some of the best times. Like the main event, we were at the main event at the cage at mm. one time. Remember, we went toe to toe for like 15 straight minutes. And mm. You knocked me out. <laughs> I knocked you out. Yeah. <laughs> Not dramatic. <laughs> but yeah, we did, we, we, we. It was we, a we flash did. knockout. It was yeah. a flash, flash knockout. Oh, yeah, I did. I remember that. Yeah, yeah okay, that, that was, was a lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, said, dro- you dropped a little bit, yeah. I dropped a little bit, yeah. We, we just went oh, so I was always so worried that you're going to get like hurt, you know, but we did go hard. Yeah, we did go this hard. was right before my fight. We're doing this stuff right yeah, before. Yeah, you got be, to gotta be brave. Yeah, you got to be, have, <laughs> believe in yourself. You know? Nice coach you are kicking the shit out of your student oh, right yeah, before man. the before his pro debut. Oh, <laughs> no hey. We had a lot of those times, though. A lot of those, you know. So your favorite part is training? Training. What part? Oh, uh, okay. Give me some other, give me some other, just, just reminiscing. Because it's, what is it, 11 years, you said? Yeah. 11 years? 11 yeah. years, yeah. Um, you, know, you know, honestly, like training with, you know, Jared and Darren and uh, Daniel, all these guys in Keenan. Yeah. Some of those were just great times. Mm. I mean, everybody just went so hard. I mean, we were just, you had these kids, these kids were machines. They were absolute machines. 
and they fought hard. They didn't take it easy. Yeah. They were down. That's why they became pro fighters. Mm. Yeah, I was putting a lot of time into the, the fight team, right? Oh, you were committed to that. An amateur, and they st- they made their debuts, yeah. and yeah. you brought them up from you know nothing to you know because we didn't have events right in no. Los Angeles really at that time. I don't think really anybody was doing it. No, that's why we kind of started like talking about I think Brett Roberts it. was still doing some shows. Was he at the time or no? The Bama. I th- the Bama maybe, stuff? Maybe. I think that was later, actually. Was it later? It was later. Yeah, he put on a good show, too. But yeah, I think those times, just the fighting was the best. I mean, the, the, the actual fights were obviously the icing on the cake. Right. But you don't get the cake and the icing unless you put the work in, man. Mm. You just... The work was everything. Mm. And the connections and the friendships, I think, for me. The connections and the yeah. friendships, yeah. Yeah. It'd be, it's hard to understand people who fight. You know, mm-hmm. people watch it on TV and they're like, "Oh my God!" You know, that guy's a pussy. Got his ass kicked. I'm like, "Do you even understand what that guy put in to even get his ass kicked?" Yeah. People don't really get the work, and I understand it. I mean, it's kind of a difficult thing to understand people getting in the, hit in the face for fun. Mm-hmm. But um, when you understand that, when you get past that, and you understand the work and the dedication, how you know it's kind of deep shit. You know, yeah. Not to sound, you know. It's all true, emotional though. about yeah, it. Yeah, it's it, a very it, spiritual it, it, experience. It's very spiritual. It's very deep. It's heavy, yeah. man. It's heavy stuff. And the friendships you build with it, the people that stick with you, and it's like a you know soldier. You're sticking with a guy in a war. This is what it is. This is a war. These kids aren't fighting for fun. You know, it's a war to stay alive. At least it was for me. <laughs> I appreciate your your loyalty. You're always loyal. Oh man, to your friends and to to me. Oh, it's I appreciate a, that. That's a real friendships. It's an easy call, man. You know, no need to thank me for that. It's uh, easy to be loyal to great people, man. It's there's no question ever about that. Today I die, pal. I mean, you changed my life. I mean, let's just call it what it is. You helped change mine. I think I'm a better person for it. You know, it's a great, what a great, truly a great experience in my life. There's no question about it. Never thought in a million years I'd be sitting in a cage with four ounce gloves, you know, brawling with somebody. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> well, for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your generosity as well. Oh, thank you. Yes, yeah, so you have one of the biggest hearts I know. Thank you. Like anybody that needs something, like I was even talking about sponsors, and you're like, oh, I can, you know, you right away, you're like the first guy to, you know, keep thank his you. shirt off his back. Thank you. I so think our whole team was that. the same with you. are welcome. Thank you. You did the same for us, too. You gave everything back to our family and our friendships, and it's been great, man. It's been a great run. We're going to keep it going, man. Yeah, that's it. Like that's I promised it. you, brown belt, black belt, world champion. World champion. We're doing it. Boom. Boom, pal. Love you, buddy boy. <laughs>